Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're at. It is the Earth Master here on this Sunday, end of the weekend, August 6th, 2023. It's about 11.42 a.m. here, California time. And uh, latest earthquake activity here on the globe. Looks like a 4.6 here around the Indonesia Islands area. <clears throat> Southern edge here of the Java Trench, along with uh, some movement up into the Japan area as well. Uh, starting off with space weather activity, it looks like we may be peeking up here into another X flare potential uh, with this uh, current line here extending well into the M flare range. Now that is uh, coming off of a, I'm not for sure which sunspot it is, maybe potentially this one once again out there on the western limb. Notice that bright feature. Haven't really peaked out on the flare chart yet but we're getting awfully close here to the x flare category uh, let's see if we got any roundness going on to a little bit of curvature here indicating uh that it could be getting ready to mellow out a little bit but still uh that's a rather strong flare we'll check back on that here in, in just a couple minutes uh it's currently sitting at a well it's well above an m3.7 Notice the global D-layer absorption map showing the radio blackout specifically right over uh, the United States area. Still seeing some proton events there uh, hanging on from yesterday's proton event. Still 50% chance for that uh, to continue. 10% chance for an X-flare probability. M-flare at 55% chance and C-flare around 99% chance. Uh, but again, it looks like just starting to peek out here again getting a little glimpse of that large flare on the far western limb of the sun that's been a very active region that's going to be 3386 which is uh this is the older image there from last night looks like today's latest image magnetogram shows that complex structure even further out there on the western limb uh, and we're left with a whole bunch of sunspot if sunspots but if you notice uh, the majority of these sunspots have dissipated very quickly. Um, and we're not really left with too many active regions here far as the uh, any complex structure that would pose some some uh, flaring. At least within these sunspots, there's not a whole lot coming around the eastern limb either. So um, we'll continue to watch this sunspot area here on the western limb uh, for some flaring. Let's see, double check this again. Yeah, it looks like it's just peeking out. Notice that uh, dropping in the level right there. Looks like potentially it could be an M5.5. Looks like that's where it peaked out at. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. Um, Aurora forecast right now, pretty minimal. Maybe on the August 8th time period, we could be seeing a little bit more in terms of Aurora possibilities with G1 storm possible on the august 8th utc time we'll check back on that as we get closer to that uh to that date all right earthquake activity what do we got going on here here's some of that movement off the coast here of japan northwestern edge of the filipino plate it's going to be this plate right here showing a little bit of movement and also down into the java sea area indonesia islands 4.8 coming in within the last hour uh, quite a bit of movement here yesterday throughout the globe. Let's go ahead and see if we got any unusual activity stirring up. Well, <laughs> South Sandwich Islands here definitely uh, on the list of those areas that are seeing some type of swarming going on. Uh, they did see a 5.7 about 7 o'clock this morning. That was followed up by a 5.1 and a 4.9. This adjustment here at the northern edge of the South Sandwich Trench. <clears throat> now, over the past few weeks or so most of the activity has been down south here uh, let's see see this large cluster about center portion southward uh, only minor adjustment up here in the last 30 days with that 4.7 and a 5.2 so it looks like we're just starting to catch up a little bit trying to equal out the uh, pressure gradient out here across the south sandwich islands uh, and that subduction zone that sits there either way pretty active uh, today in this region three earthquakes so far of a moderate magnitude sitting down there about 38 kilometers or so into that subduction zone region uh, South America following that activity in the Argentina region here 
uh, was this yesterday, that 6.2 deep earthquake, almost 600 kilometers deep. We did see, uh, looks like a couple other smaller earthquakes upstream here. Uh, let's bring back today's map. There we go. A couple other smaller quakes in the four range from yesterday. I'm not really seeing anything else today on the map from the USGS, but uh, let's take a look here at the EMSC model. A uh, little bit quieter right now. Looks like maybe some twos and some threes here upstream of where that deep 6.2 struck, but it's a little bit less active today. Uh, across the area of the Middle America Trench, a couple different swarms up and down the board there. Not anything major currently, just a little bit of smaller earthquake activity here. Uh, Puerto Rico region, a couple smaller quakes as well, including a 4.2, that was from yesterday, up around the British uh, British Virgin Islands area, close to the Puerto Rico Trench. All right, the states, what do we got here? Some movement there from last night, I believe. This is a 2.2 uh, in the New Madrid Seismic Zone. Spotty activity across Colorado and West Texas. Looking at Southern California here. Not a whole lot going on currently. Uh, the 2.5 map shows us that uh, there was only one 2.9 here off of the San Andreas Fault, just south of San Jose, 5.2 kilometers deep. Now, most of this activity, obviously uh, some very small microquake movement. I'm not seeing any swarming activity either across the California region, aside from the very typical Clear Lake Volcanic Field swarm that's there at the uh, hydrothermal operations, the Calpine area. <clears throat> uh, let's see, overnight, 2.5 just off of the Mendocino Fault Zone here, triple point junction almost, um, about 18 kilometers deep. Aside from that, not a whole lot going on through the Pacific Northwest. One earthquake way up here near Hamilton, a little 1.3. Let's go ahead and check out Yellowstone real quick and see what we have up there in Northwest Wyoming. Still uncertain though on if this uh, activity last night or yesterday was a uh, thunderstorm activity or the seismic activity. It looks like it was uh, potentially wind and thunderstorms. Uh, we're going to check that again today. It looks like mainly it was up around the northwestern corner of the park. Uh, we'll see if these thunderstorms pop up again today and if we still get that same signature. It looks like we may be seeing something here around Mary Lake. Notice that uh, signature there. So I'm going to run over and check the, the weather map here real quick. <clears throat> And see what we have going on up there. Any uh, thunderstorms that may be brewing. Looks like they're popping up already. See that? Uh, so some wind, some rain. Doesn't look like there's too much lightning here within this zone. Uh, but again, that looks like it's centered right over the Mary Lake area. So that's kind of what we're seeing here on this map. Uh, just the start of some storms popping up. So we'll watch that throughout the afternoon, see if that looks and resembles this type of feature, right? That's how I, how I know that sometimes these are uh, outside interference marks. So instead of an earthquake swarm, this is uh, nothing more than thunderstorms brewing up out there, creating that type of uh, signature there on the graph. That obviously was the earthquake uh, over in the... Um, uh, Montana region, right? Let me double check. Or may, no, I think that was that 3.9 there in um, the Chalice, Idaho area, northwest of there anyway. I did measure a reading over here across the Yellowstone area. All right, uh, moving on. See what else we got here across the Alaska area. Looks a little bit, little bit quieter up here as well. Only a handful of quakes through the Cook Inlet region. Big Island of Hawaii out here in the beautiful blue Pacific. One earthquake uh, looks like around the Hill in a slump area. I haven't seen too much activity across here recently. 1.8 and a little bit of movement here across the uh, Kilauea volcano but uh, no major changes there currently taking place. Most of the activity there all also offshore near the Pahala area. Uh, a couple newer earthquakes out in the East Pacific rise. 
Now that activity should stir up potentially some further movement here across the Peru Chile Trench. This is a divergent boundary out here north of the Easter Island region. It's going to be this area right here, this sea mount, so to speak. 4.8, also some movement stirring up down here along the Pacific and the Antarctica boundary, Pacific Antarctica Ridge to be exact, 5.2 from last night. A couple deeper quakes here through the area just after midnight uh, around the Fiji area. Notice uh, we're getting a little bit of adjustment upstream though following that deeper activity. So it looks like things may be wanting to pop off up at the surface levels. Uh, we've seen more deeper earthquake activity here in this region than we have surface activity. So continue to watch this region for some uh, further surface movement. Uh, as far as GeoNet servers go, let me go over here and check these guys out. This is just the recorded seismograph stations and there's uh, some activity there from last night. Some smaller quakes there around North Island, but for the most part, looks like things are pretty mellow across this across these graphs today of course we had that earthquake down in Australia drop down it looks like from a 5.5 to a 5.2 either way somewhat of a moderate quake over there not really seeing anything stirring up yet uh, as far as aftershock activity goes did have a 2.6 a little bit further to the east here around southern Australia uh, but either way, it looks like swarming continues here across the Indonesia Islands area. Uh, we'll continue to watch that uh, region for some movement. Although up here north around the Mariana Trench, Izu Trench should show some activity considering this movement on the northwestern edge here of this plate boundary should, uh, should kick things up here slightly. All right, uh, let's see. Anything else major going on here? One little earthquake, a couple little earthquakes up here outside of the Iceland area. USGS showing one earthquake, 4.6 from earlier this morning it looks like, out here along this, uh, this plate boundary. All right, let's double check that space weather here. What a beautiful feature there, look at that. Another bright flare way out there on the western limb, it's possible. <clears throat> Looks like that's partially black, uh, blocked out as well. It's possible, maybe that may have been an X flare. Um, had it been facing directly towards the earth, but either way, that's a somewhat of a strong flare. And that's for sure, we'll continue to watch that uh, region as, as long as we can, because it's not gonna remain visible for too much longer there, 3386. The culprit of the X-Flare and also today's strong M-Flare. <clears throat> Excuse me. Drifting out onto the uh, western limb. I don't really don't see any other areas, folks, that are worth watching for uh, for as any sunspot activity goes. All right. Weather today is a different story. Got a little bit of chances of severe weather out here across portions of the Midwest in areas of the south. Uh, there is that 5% chance for tornado probabilities. Looks like mostly around um, Missouri area, Illinois. These areas have a slightly elevated chance here of seeing tornado potential. So keep your eyes on the sky. Wind and hail events as well. Looks like hail will be a big time thing potentially out there in Illinois as well. Tomorrow, we got a little bit more of a severe weather threat across portions of the eastern states with uh, even the broad area of tornado potential. Look at that 5% covering uh, quite a few states out here along with the 2% even more so. And uh, looks like wind is going to be a big deal. 45% chance. That's getting up there. It's almost certain uh, if you get one of these uh, thunderstorms brewing up, you're going to get some big time straight line winds uh, in excess of 65 miles per, uh, per hour possible. Either way, tomorrow's going to be the day out there along the eastern uh, portion of the country to be very weather aware. It's Monday too, right? Monday, tomorrow, just when everyone goes back to work. 
All right, uh, let's see what else we got here, folks. I think that's about it. Uh, trimmer map last night. Double check that and see. We got a dry north wind out here in California today, heating things up, but also creating some elevated fire conditions. Uh, hopefully no fire to start. Today would not be a good day, or any day for that matter. Um, 82 epicenters of trimmer, mostly um, Washington and the Oregon area. Now that's the Cascadia subduction zone area from yesterday. Looks like that's tapering down though. Still haven't seen any major peaking, so to speak, of trimmer events as we've seen in the past. Uh, looks like, you know, the ones earlier this year, back in April, we had a little bit um, in May as well. Notice these lines up here on the graph. The higher it is on the graph, obviously these lines mean that there's more trimmer events taking place during that time period. But uh, we're just toning down here. It's been... Uh, our last tone down looks like it was probably back in 2018, 2019. So it's been a couple years. We'll continue to watch that, though. All right, folks. Have a good day. Enjoy the rest of whatever's left of the weekend here. Um, it's going to be a hot one out here in California, so probably just going to stay inside and take it easy. Got a little bit too much sun here yesterday. I was out in the pool and barbecuing and all that good stuff. We'll catch you guys back here later tonight unless something major happens. Have a good day. We'll catch you guys later.